Hello, everyone, and uh, I hope you're having a fabulous Wednesday. Uh, welcome to Women Winning Wednesdays. I'm attorney Elsa W. Smith, your Maryland estate planning attorney, uh, and I'm the owner of the law offices of Elsa W. Smith, where our mission is to empower women through estate planning. Um, I'm really uh, excited um, about today's episode, but here's why, because I kid you not, at just about four, a little after four o'clock this morning, uh, I got an email from LinkedIn letting me know that I now had access to stream live on LinkedIn. So uh, we're now streaming on LinkedIn, um, go figure. It's, it's awesome, it's another opportunity, um, another way that I can get the message out. So I'm really excited. And for those of you that are catching this on LinkedIn, I know I just posted um, the notification earlier today, but if you are catching it, hi to my friends on LinkedIn. If you're catching this on the replay, no matter where you're listening from, uh, you know, Facebook, YouTube, and now LinkedIn, make sure to put hashtag replay in the comments because uh, we'd love to you know, know that you're watching and tell us where you're listening from. Um, the, I wanna also remind you that this series, the, the purpose of it through the guests that, I've, uh, that I interview and the educational content that I present, the point of it is to show you examples, glimpses of what an empowered woman is and the tools that she needs to win. Um, and like I said, one of the ways I do that is by bringing you educational content like what we're going to do today. So today we are doing um, kind of a deep dive into probate. Ah, um, yeah, probate. We're going to talk a bit about that. Um, I get questions off and on about like what probate is and certain questions are, uh, regarding the process. So I decided to actually just do a you know, collaboration kind of of all those questions. And I've created um, a list, if you will, of, and what we're going to cover today are the 10 things that can go wrong during probate. So um, I'm going to give you tips that you can actually put into use right away if you're just starting the probate process. Um, so you want to make sure and take notes, share this video with people in your network, um, you know, on your, in your friends list, uh, so we can get the word out. So again, 10 things that can go wrong during probate. And these are only 10. Unfortunately, there are many more things that can go wrong during the probate process, but today we're just going to talk about 10. So the first thing I want to do is define what, you know, what is probate, right? So probate is, it's a legal process that happens after a person dies. And it involves, uh, among other things, you know, proving that a will is valid, if there was a will, right? Proving to the court that the, that the will is valid. Another aspect is identifying and then inventorying, cataloging the property and the assets uh, that belong to the decedent. And then it involves having that property appraised. So we're talking about real estate, having the decedent's home appraised. If the decedent had um, fine jewelry or art collections or um, you know home furnishings, all those things need to, need to be appraised. And then um, it involves paying any debts or taxes that the estate owes. Um, and then it's distributing what's left after the taxes are paid and other obligations are paid, um, distributing what's left uh, according to the will, or if there was no will, then distributed, uh, distributing the property according to uh, state law. And by the way, and I've touched on this in another video, that's called dying intestate, when you die without a will. All right, so let's get right to it. The 10 things that can go wrong during probate, and I'm gonna start at 10 and work my way up to number one. So number 10, 
the personal representative does not want to take on the responsibility. Oh boy. When a person creates a will, you know, she typically is going to name a personal representative to manage the affairs of, of the estate. Um, if that person, a personal representative isn't interested in fulfilling the role or is not able to, for whatever reason, that person can actually decline, decline, I should say, to be appointed by the court. The court then is going, just going to need to, you know, appoint someone else. Now, it's important that while you're creating your estate plan, you know, to talk to the person that you're considering uh, to fill this very important role. You want to know if they want to or if they have the time to. Um, many, you know, many people are honored uh, to be asked, but they have a difficult time saying no if they're really not up to the task. All right. Let's see. And all right, number nine, number nine. The personal representative fails uh, to fulfill or breaches her duties. Now, a personal representative has a fiduciary duty. That's a that's a duty of care, right? If that personal representative or the PR acts in her own self-interest or she otherwise fails to fulfill her duties during the probate process, there are some legal remedies that are available. Now, a court can actually remove her and um, appoint someone else to take care of the assets and just oversee the probate process. Um, now, in some cases, the heirs uh, or the beneficiaries can initiate you know, legal action um, for that breach uh, of fiduciary duty against the personal representative, especially if she caused a financial loss due to that failure to fulfill her obligations, right? So number eight, the will is contested. Now, what does that mean? A will can be contested. It can be challenged, right? If someone believes that it is not a true reflection of the wishes of the deceased. Now, a person who wants to challenge a will or contest it, they're going to have to prove that the will should not be probated because of a problem. Like what? Well, um, you know, the decedent creating a will under you know duress or if there was some fraud involved there, but they're going to have to prove that. Um, now, the personal representative and maybe the heirs or the beneficiaries can present alternate evidence to show that the will is in fact valid and it does reflect the decedent's wishes. Um, and you stand a better chance of winning that argument, winning that debate, if the will was done according to uh, you know, the requirements of, of your state. So let's see, now we move to number seven. Okay, this involves creditors. Now, creditors can make um, very costly claims um, against the uh, against the estate. During the process, they're going to have an opportunity to make claims against the estate, and valid claims do need to be paid out uh, of the estate assets. Now, it's up to the creditors to show that they have um, that they have a right to collect um, and they have a limited window in which to do so. Um, in some case, uh, in some states, I should say, the state may uh, act as a creditor, if you will, and try to recoup the funds um, spent on um, Medicaid expenses for, um, for the deceased. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. Number six, um, not picking up mail from the decedent's property. Um, as soon as you can, if you are the personal representative, 
ask that the post office forward um, mail to an address or a PO box where um, you have access to it. Um, the reason is that you can miss out on important notices and claims from creditors or uh, from creditors. Um, another good reason to do a real practical one is that you don't want um, the property to be tempting to burglars or anyone that wants to come vandalize the property. You know, when mail starts to pile up, you know, it's, it's a sure sign that the property is vacant. So uh, as soon as you can, make sure and make arrangements to have um, mail picked up um, from the property as soon as you can and on a regular basis. Number five, failing to quickly take control of and protect assets. Um, this is really important for real estate uh, purposes. Um, the state, uh, excuse me, real estate needs to be properly insured, secured, you know, making sure that the, the, the appropriate locks are on um, to secure against break-ins um, and protect, get insured to protect against loss of, you know, non-payment of taxes and so forth. If you are not in the same uh, state as where the property is located, it can become a bit challenging, um, particularly when it comes to, you know, maintaining the, the curb appeal of the property. So that's like basic landscaping, making sure that those things are tended to, um, you know, on a, on a regular basis. Um, but if you're working with a realtor who um, is going to assist you in selling the home, and if they're familiar with the probate process, they usually have a network of individuals that uh, would be able to assist you um, in that regard. Um, you also want to uh, take control of the uh, the estate's cash by consolidating it into um, an estate account. If the decedent had like maybe five different bank accounts, you once you are officially appointed as personal representative, you then part of your job is to start marshalling those assets, um, closing out those accounts, and then making sure that those funds are placed into an estate account. Um, and by the way, just don't give anyone else um, permission to, to access those funds. Don't share an ATM card or, or share um, rights of, you know, signature rights on, on the account. You don't want to do that. Number four, the assets can't be found, right? If there are assets, um, that should be part of that probated uh, estate um, that can't be located. This can actually cause delays. Um, and the, the personal representative has to try to find all of the estate assets that must eventually be transferred um, to, uh, to the decedent, excuse me, to the, the decedent's heirs. Thank you. Good. I'm glad we're providing good, good information. Um, but yeah, so that's really important. And that problem can be avoided if the person that is creating the estate plan, um, and particularly the will, provides instructions on where those assets can be found, where they can be located. So that's, that's a real important one. And number three, Distributing assets too soon, okay? As the personal representative, you have the authority to approve creditor claims and pay those creditors as well as, you know, distributing assets to, to beneficiaries. But sometimes the estate doesn't have um, sufficient assets to pay all of the claims um, and, and honor the gifts um, that the decedent wanted to make um, if there was a will. When that happens, the creditors need to be prioritized according to however the, the laws of your state dictate and the assets distributed accordingly. If you fail 
to follow the law and distribute assets according to the law, you could be held personally liable. Okay. And number two, reading close to the home stretch, not keeping accurate accounting records. Now, as a personal representative, your number one job is to take control and to be diligent in accounting for all of the assets in the estate. You need to make sure that you keep accurate records of everything that you do um, so that when it comes time to you know, pay taxes, make the distributions to the heirs, um, and then submit a final accounting or a report to the court, which by the way, that's one of your responsibilities, you're not left scrambling um, to track down necessary information and records. So the more detail oriented you are, um, the smoother the whole probate process um, is going to be. Now, when preparing an accounting, um, many personal representatives, they fail to use the right format. They fail to give an accurate description um, of what was received and what was dispersed. Um, they lump items together instead of, you know, itemizing it to make it easier for the court to follow. And they just fail to correctly show, you know, market values of, of you know, investments, gains, losses that were made in investments and um, any interest, um, any interest that was earned. So at the time that the estate needs to be settled, all the numbers have got to line up and they need to make sense. If not, you are going to get objections um, from the heirs as well as, as the court um, who, may, who may not uh, approve it and you know, just basically send you back and say, you know, fix this, find out where the errors are and resubmit. So now we are down, I told you there were 10. So now we are down to, I would say the number one thing that can go wrong um, during probate. And I'm so glad that um, many of you are just, you're, you're taking notes, people who have chimed in, I really appreciate your comments. So now we are down to the number one thing that can go wrong or mistakes that people make during uh, probate failing to hire competent counsel. Seriously, um, you know, probate can be complicated. Um, it can be a complicated and, and really a draining process because think about it, you're, you're grieving and then you've got to take care of all these ministerial things like opening and closing accounts and all of that and, and, and just the, the, the myriad of things that a personal representative is responsible for doing. Um, trying to do everything on your own, um, you know, like I said, while you're mourning, while you're grieving, um, that's an easy way to get yourself into some trouble. Um, now, hiring an experienced attorney is not going to is is not only uh, going to ensure that the probate process um, is completed in a timely, you know, in an appropriate way but it's also going to prevent you from making mistakes that could cost you the estate, um, that could cost not only you, it can cost the estate and also the, the beneficiaries. Um, so, you know, you may think that you, you know, you're saving a few dollars, um, you know, the, the, the adage is, you know, don't be, you know, penny wise and pound foolish. Um, you know, you think that you're saving yourself a few dollars by trying to to do things on your own, but you could actually be setting yourself for a breach of fiduciary obligation um, and and expert and personal liability if you are not sure of what you are doing. Um, you can save yourself a whole lot of time, trouble, and grief by getting you know sound advice um, at the start. You know, and I know it's, you know, people's like, well, you know, I need, you know, my, my family member, whomever, you know, just died. I understand that there needs to be some time to grieve and to basically just, just kind of catch your breath. But um, 
don't let too much time pass and certainly seek the help of a professional. And one thing I, I wanted to add kind of like as, as an addendum to this, la to this last point, the number one reason is during the probate process, you're gonna need really a team of professionals assisting you. Um, and examples are a CPA to file the uh, tax returns for uh, you know the last tax return that the decedent um, needed to file for the year in which they in, in which they passed away. Um, any returns that are owed by the estate. Um, you're also going to need um, a realtor, chances are, to sell the decedent's property. Um, that, and those are in addition to hiring um, you know, a, an attorney, a probate attorney, a state administration attorney, to help you through the process, to help you prepare the documents that are gonna be needed to present to the court. That's why, that's why you hire um, an attorney to do for you. You're ultimately responsible for keeping those records, but working with a law firm is really gonna help make that load um, a little bit less on your shoulders, um, especially during a time when you're, when you're really vulnerable and life continues to happen. You know, you're still, if you're, um, you know, you're raising children and, you know, you have a job and some other things, your life is continuing, but now add to that the responsibility of being a personal representative, which can actually be quite time consuming and it's a huge responsibility. So having the assistance of a competent counsel is really going to help ease the burden, um, especially during the, during that trying time. So, you know, we've talked today about the 10 reasons or the 10 things that can go wrong um, during probate. Um, I want to really thank you for, for tuning in. And like I said at the outset of this segment, I want you to share this video because I know that there are people that are gonna catch us on the replay that really could use this information. And maybe you know they've had a loss just recently and maybe this video comes right at the right time that they need to know like what to do, like what are my next steps? Hopefully this video will give you, will give them um, some insight. So please feel free to share uh, share this video. It's gonna be loaded, uh, uploaded onto our YouTube channel at Elsa W. Smith Law uh, later on today. And by the way, um, you know, the, our YouTube channel is an entire library of free content um, regarding not only estate administration, but estate planning um, as well. So you're welcome to, to visit and please subscribe, become a part of our growing, uh, our growing community. Um, I'm really happy uh, again to have my LinkedIn folks joining us. I'm really excited now to be streaming on LinkedIn um, and join us next Wednesday for another episode of Women Winning Wednesdays. And by the way, if you have questions about probate, if you just need to have a conversation, get some guidance, I want you to contact our office at 410, if you're in Maryland or DC, 410-995-7719. That's 410-995-7719. Tune in next week for another episode of Women Winning Wednesdays. This is attorney Elsa W. Smith, your Maryland estate planning attorney. I'm so glad that you tuned in and I'll see you then. Take care, everybody.